The San Francisco Giants drop a very tough one versus the Washington Nationals getting shut out, unfortunately, at Oracle Park by a final score of 4-0. to And this uh, game was so important when you consider that the Nationals are the team that the Giants are trying to leapfrog in front of in the National League wildcard standings. Of course, now with the loss, uh, that sets the Giants back a game. And, you know, this was one of those games that it was a two-game swing. If the Giants come away with the victory, um, you know, they're sitting a game and a half back of the wild card. Um, you know, being that we lost, we're now sitting three and a half games back of the Phillies and Nationals as those two teams are tied for the wild card. And so let's get into this, guys. So the Shark, Jeff Samarja, got the start for your Giants. And, you know, give credit to Samarja for, you know, not allowing the game to get way out of hand. Uh, but Samarja just threw so many pitches and, you know, so he really labored out there against the Nationals, going four innings in the outing, allowing three hits, uh, give up one earned run, so not bad there, gave up three walks. So again, you know, Samarja's command was very off in this outing. He did strike out three batters and is having a very solid season with a 3.70 ERA. And the Giants were opposing a guy by the name of Eric Fed, a 26-year-old right-handed pitcher, and he just shut the Giants down. Um, you know, there's been a lot of games at Oracle Park over the years that we've seen when this Giants offense just lays a goose egg and gets shut out. And this was a tough one. We were getting base hits in the game. We were having opportunities with men on base. We were just never able to cash in, you know, with the clutch hit, the big hit that we needed with runners in scoring position. So um, Eric Fedek, he goes six innings, gives up six hits. So again, you know, if we had pieced those hits together in a certain order, you know, runs could have came across the board. Um, he doesn't allow an earned run, does not allow a walk. So he was really on top of his game. Uh, struck out two in the... And so out. guys, on the offensive side of things for your San Francisco Giants, there was not a lot to note in this game, uh, but Scooter Jeanette got the start at second base. He went one for three. He is now hitting 217 on the year. Of course, that's a very small sample size uh, Scooter Jeanette missed several times this year due to injury. Um, Joe Panic had a pinch hit appearance, and any at bat that we're seeing or at bats for Joe Panic now, it is crunch time for him because, you know, I think he is essentially proving his worth and value to Farhan Zaidi. And unless things can shake out over these last couple months in the positive direction for Joe Panic, you know, this could be the end of Joe Panic and. You know, I, it's not really the way that we would want to see things go out. We all remember the good memories of 2014. Of course, the big double play that was turned in Game 7 of the 2014 World Series. Who can forget it when Jeremy Affel was on the mound, got the ground ball, and, you know, between panic to Crawford to Bell at first, and on further review, uh, it was called a double play. And so, you know, Joe Panic has had some great moments in a Giants uniform, a walk-off hit at the last playoff game that I actually attended, which was our last victory at home in a playoff game. It was Game 4 in the 2016 National League Division Series, one of the greatest days and moments of my life. I'll never forget that day. Um, so, you know, really huge for Joe Panic uh, to get a hit in his pinch hit appearance. And, you know, hopefully we'll get to see some more playing time and, you know, really have him prove his worth. But honestly, you know, if I had to pick between starting Scooter Jeanette or Joe Panic, of course, I would lean probably towards Scooter Jeanette because, um, you know, he's got more power and, you know, I think more capability of knocking in runs. And so he's more of a threat, I think, in the lineup. Joe Panic, I would say, would be more likely to be an average type of hitter, um, gap to gap, uh, get on base. Um, so, you know, definitely a prototypical could be leadoff hitter, but, you know, nevertheless, still a clutch player as it is. And, you know, so that is going to be very intriguing to monitor uh, moving forward. And so, guys, now let's get into the scoring of how the game played out. So in the top of the third inning, uh, the Nationals got on the board uh, thanks to one of their hottest hitters in their lineup. He's just having a insane type of year. And what's insane is that in Washington, they believe Anthony Rendon at third base is a far more... Uh, better player well I, I shouldn't say far more better 
but I should say better player than Nolan Arenado at third base for the Colorado Rockies. So, of course, being that we've seen the damage that Arenado has done, of course, we could beg to differ who's the better third baseman, but you cannot go wrong with either. Anthony Rendon is hitting 316 on the year with 24 home runs and 86 RBIs. So just insane types of numbers. And, you know, there's still like 40 or so games left in the year. I mean, he could wound up with like 130, 140 RBIs or something crazy like that. And so Anthony Rendon, he gets the Nationals on the board with his 86th RBI of the season, an RBI single, uh, making it one nothing Nationals. And so in the top of the fifth inning, um, we saw Sam Coonrod, who came into the game, the hard-throwing rookie right-hander. Um, unfortunately, he balked in a run. And so Trey Turner came in to score on the balk, making it 2 nothing Nationals. And then later in the inning, Matt Adams, a guy that we remember all too well from his time with the Cardinals. We definitely remember having to face him in those years that we were having to beat the Cardinals to advance from the National League Championship Series to the World Series. And so Matt Adams, he knocks an RBI double, uh, making it 3 nothing Nationals at that point. And in the top of the ninth inning, again, um, what you saw is uh, a rookie, Sam Selman, a 28-year-old. Uh, again, you know, really uh, having to, you know, just go through the ex experiences. And, you know, they say that life's greatest teacher is experience. And it's really true because unless you've really done something hands-on or had that experience, um, you're not really going to be sure how to respond in that situation. So Sam Selman in the ninth inning, guys. Anthony Rendon, a very high Q type of player, is able to steal home. Um, the throw from uh, goes down to second base, and then on the throw coming back, they don't get the guy home, and the guy from first winds up going to second. So in a perfect world, a double steal. Guy steals home, guy steals second. And so, um, you know, and again, it was Anthony Rendon who was in the middle of all that, stealing home. And that gave the Nationals another insurance run of four at that point. So it was 4 nothing, And, you know, the offense, again, like we said, we only mustered seven hits. Uh, we really got shut down in this one. And, you know, so it was an unfortunate um, defeat, especially when you consider the energy that, you know, the fans just were never able to get into a game like this, getting shut out at home. Um, you know, yeah, you set the table here and there, but, you know, never getting that clutch hit, that hit that you need, and a hit that we've seen the Giants get, you know, for the last month or so, and really the last week now, it's been tough because now we've kind of gone back into just playing, you know, an average brand of baseball, and, you know, I think now with the two series losses, uh, we were two and four, and so losing the opener of this three game series now that puts us at two and five in our last seven games. So yeah, we are definitely hit a little bit of a rust spell for a week, uh, but we knew that we weren't gonna continue playing at that high level of a pace and sustain that over the entire year. We knew that we would be able to play close up to that ability, but falling back the last week, um, nothing to hang our heads on, but we definitely are, are gonna have to make some adjustments moving forward. And so guys, now I'm going to get into the bullpen statistics of of the game for your San Francisco Giants. So following Samarja, Sam Kumrad, of course, came in. He went one inning, uh, giving up one hit, allowed two earned runs, uh, allowed three walks. So it was a rough day for Coonrod, um, just didn't have it. He struck out two batters, <clears throat> now with a 2.45 ERA on the year. Trevor Gott would come in and look very impressive. Former Washington National here. He goes two innings, uh, does not give up a hit or an earned run, and does not allow a walk. Now Trevor Gott with a 3.64 ERA on the year. Reyes Maranta would come in after him. He goes one inning, uh, does not give up a hit or an earned run, uh, walks two batters, and strikes out one. Reyes Maranta now with a 2.74 ERA on the year. And Sam Selman, of course, would pitch the ninth inning. He went one inning, uh, giving up two hits in that outing, allowing one earned run on the steal home from Anthony Rendon. Uh, does not give up a walk and strikes out two batters now in a limited sample size with a 6.75 ERA.
And so guys, as we look ahead to the future, to the San Francisco Giants next game in the series, game two of the series, the Giants are going to be sending a rookie, Connor Menez, a 24-year-old left-handed pitcher. Yes, guys, a 24-year-old lefty, just like myself. Of course, I'm an outfielder, not a pitcher. But nevertheless, guys, we saw Connor Menez in his Major League debut back on July the 21st go five innings, allowing two earned runs to the New York Mets. And the New York Mets have been one of the hottest teams in baseball of late, having won 10 out of their last 11. And crazy to think, but they've moved a game ahead of us now in the wild card standings. So not too long ago when we took three out of four from the Mets, um, you know, we really were one of those teams that cooled the Mets off as right now they've just been kind of running through everybody at the moment. So it's just been insane to see that. So extremely excited to see Connor Menez make his second start, of course, um, with a 3.60 ERA going those five innings and giving up two runs. Had six strikeouts in the outing, and he is going to be opposing Annabel Sanchez, a guy we know very well from his days with the Miami Marlins. <coughs> Sorry. Annabel Sanchez is 6-6 six and six with a 3.80 ERA to go with 93 strikeouts. And so, guys, of course, the Giants sitting three and a half games back of the wild card. Um, nothing to hang our heads on. We have another opportunity to come out tomorrow and win a ball game and get right back into the thick of things. And so, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you made it all the way through to the end of the video, then be sure to smash that like button. I very much appreciate reading all of your guys' comments. I love interacting with you and getting your guys' insight and perspective on the world of sports and it's what we love to watch all so much and one of the things that really captures sports really is the fact that the you know the unknown i mean life's most amazing endeavors seem to be um you know that we don't know what the future holds for us but what we do know is that if we put in the work now you know we can reap the benefits and be eat eating from the fruit of the seeds that we plant into the future so you know, that is really um, what it's all about. And so, guys, comment down below. Love to hear your opinion, your perspective. What are your guys' thoughts following this shutout and, you know, the Giants being in the thick of the wild card race? Such an exciting time, three and a half back. And so, until next time, guys, I will see you again. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.